Well, hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. I guess today is uh, day 7 in the 30 and 30 challenge and uh, I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm grasping at straws here. Today, I'm actually taking the advice. Um, I asked in a couple of videos for suggestions as to things you guys might like to see. Uh, ways for me to really fill up these 30 and 30 videos to meet Rev's challenge. And uh, one of the things that was suggested was long-term plans. I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of these things are so long-term, they practically fall under dreams. So don't be disappointed if you don't see any of these things in the next year or two years. Uh, I intend to keep the channel going for a lot longer than that. We'll see what's going on with YouTube. It's, uh, it's getting weird out there. But as long as I can still keep putting up these videos and uh, kind of giving you guys updates on what's going on, I, I will keep doing that. So... Yeah, let's get started looking around this big old yard here and I'll show you in amongst all the snow and the mess from the winter uh, some of the places that I want to get some of these things done. Yeah, let's get started. I guess probably one of the first things I'd really like to do something about is this garage in a box. Um, I like our Jeep more than um, this really shows. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd really, really like to build a solid wooden frame, some plywood, you know, doors, maybe even some windows in there. We've got power running to it through an extension cord. You can sort of see it there because I got to plug in the block heater for most winter nights. There's another power connection there, but I have other plans for that in the long run. But one of the things that I'd really like to do is I'd like to build this and make it a solid structure. We've replaced that tarp. I think this is the third one we've put on in the couple of years we've been here. This time we got a, a really seriously heavy duty tarp for it though. So it should last a little bit longer. This is pretty serious tarp material. I'm hoping we get at least a couple years out of this. It's very similar to the one that was on here when we bought the place, but uh, obviously this one is in better shape so yes so one of the things I'd like to get around to and off the front of the house here you may recognize this from summertime videos we've got uh, this kind of garden patch comes up to this other electrical box and ultimately I would like to put a sunroom on the front here this is the kitchen so if we had a nice big you know kind of a garden area or even just a basic sunroom area We'd, uh, I think, get some decent solar gain as far as heat coming in through those windows in the winter time. That one on the left there does open, so, you know, that would be good. We also lose an awful lot of heat throughout the winter along the base of our very, very old foundation. This place is not really properly insulated. So I think, if nothing else, putting a sunroom up here would, uh, well, slow down the heat loss a little bit. And, you know, I think it would look a lot better than just this random bluey gray siding. A lot of weeds and stuff that have got to come out of here. Obviously that's a, you know, long-term project. But that's kind of what this video is about, is those long-term projects. So yeah, I'd like to get a sunroom on the front of the house here. It doesn't have to be anything fabulous or expensive, but if it could delay the heat loss and maybe get some passive solar gain, that would be great. Moving around, this is something I hope to get to this year. Um, these tarragana, caragana bushes, whatever they are, these things are really annoying, really invasive, and have gotten kind of tall. Just doing a little Google Earth stocking of our house, and uh, these show up in, in pictures from 2009 and 2014. And in about 2009, they were here-ish, from what I can tell, looking at other things around the property. I think that's a good level. I'm going to try and cut them down to about there in the spring. I might do it in the winter if I get bored enough, but I'd rather do it in the spring. And then, you know, okay, we've got more long-term plans here. I've been griping about these trees <laughs> since we moved in. And the main reason that I, I kind of complain about these things, well, there are two main reasons. One is it kind of looks like this is the edge of our property, and it's not. Over there behind the potato box is actually the edge of the property. Not not the fence that you see there, but like a few feet in front of it. It's kind of screwy, kind of strange. And the second reason being, these ones here block an awful lot of spring and fall light that would otherwise be landing in my garden area, 
where I want to build a proper greenhouse. So these got to come down first. So I certainly don't want to be crashing them through glass or plastic or whatever I do eventually end up using to build that. So as you can see, I mean, there's that one's down and there's a few others that we have gotten down along the way. And that's going to leave us with these stumps all over the place. But I was kind of thinking I might actually leave the stumps a little bit higher than that one is there and get some uh, mushroom kits. So you can get those spore plugs, you basically drill a hole into your stump or whatever and for the next few years it'll produce those whatever type of mushrooms for you. We don't get a whole lot of northern light. In the summertime the sun does set back there but for most of the year this is kind of lit but mostly shady so I'm kind of thinking it'll be a good environment to grow mushrooms in and it should help break down the stumps a little bit for when we do finally grind them out. So, in the meantime, I've still got to cut these down, which may be one of the videos in this 30 and 30. I really still haven't decided. The weather has been so weird. It's actually only minus two right now, which is suspiciously warm for Manitoba in January. It rained yesterday. I was talking to a gentleman. He can't even recall the last time it rained in January here. But that's, that's where we're at, global weirdness. Anyway, so panning back over here, you can see my ground cover over my garden, but in front of these spruce trees, those shorter ones there, I'm thinking about maybe digging out and putting behind the fence back there because all of these trees, they're, well, oh, get out from underneath the spruce or pine or whatever this is. All of these trees here in the backyard, while they do block a certain amount of wind and snow, I'm, I'm actually quite worried about them falling on the house. They blow something fierce. They're not very sturdy. If you really look closely, there's an awful lot of dead branches and just dead trees in there. So that's another job for the chainsaw. We were kind of hoping for larger snow drifts this year. Last year, by this time, we had drifts up over the side of the long shed, like literally Fuzzy was walking at about this height on the snow. And uh, I think the winter before that, he did been tobogganing on the <laughs> ice fishing sled from a height of about that tree there. It might have been this one. Um, maybe it's grown a foot or two since then, but not much. It was it was an incredibly high snow pile that he was playing on. So I was kind of counting on that to be able to walk on it and uh, cut down some of these tops and work it from there in the spring, but that just, that's not how it worked out. Anywho, once those are gone, so, like I say, these are long-term plans. I'd really like to put in a nice big greenhouse here. And I, I would like to build it to proper house standards. I'm talking insulation, vapor barrier, the whole nine yards. Because we have a lot more cold season than warm season. Any heat I generate in there, I want to keep. And those of you who have been around for a while know, well... I want to grow my kale and stuff all year round. So, yeah, that is going to be an expensive, definitely long-term project. Let's see, panning over here, a little fire pit and silly little bench. Back here, we have this pile of brush. Uh, the birds, snakes, mice, squirrels, all seem to love it the way it is right now. And as cool as that is, and as much fun as it is to watch them playing in it, the ultimate goal here, still at this uh, age, dry up a little bit then I'm gonna kinda of sink a hole behind it I wanna break all this down I got that chipper I'm gonna to have to fix it up sharpen the blade we may make a video about that and uh, like I said like to chip it all down pack it down make it the base of kind of a curved hoogle mound because as everything melts it all kind of flows towards this spot in the yard so I think if I could get that kind of absorption going on at the base of a nice curved bed I should get really nice long-term results out of this without having to water very often, and that would be great. Up here in front of the long shed, more plans. Aside from all the obvious cleanup I need to do, we were digging out poles and such from the back junk pile that's in the corner of the yard, trying to see if we could figure something out for a chin-up bar, but unfortunately, none of these things are in any kind of shape to do that. But what I'd like to do here in front of the long shed is at least put on a lean-to style greenhouse so I've got somewhere I can put my starts a little bit sooner they'll be protected from the wind 
somewhat protected from uh, the harshness of the sun rays and uh, hopefully adjust and get into the yard just a little bit sooner because I do have very limited opportunity to get um, well fruit from my peppers and tomatoes so the sooner I can start on it the better been kind of thinking it's about 16 feet from the edge here to just in front of the Saskatoon bush there you can sort of see it sticking out from the snow so if I made it like 16 feet wide 8 feet forward that's already basically twice the size of the greenhouse I used to have so that would be good it would be it would be helpful definitely one of my long-term plans since we're down here behind the long shed though I mean I got the shooting shed over there you can see the remains of the vigilante testing looking up I mean here's one this tree is basically dead for some reason there's like a clothesline tied from it to the one beside it I don't understand why I've never understood why but they all need to come down the problem with bringing these guys down without a lot of snowpack is that they're all pretty much set up to fall on the long shed so that doesn't work for me I'm gonna have to get creative um, in ways that I'm not familiar with so that's gonna be more thinking uh, maybe than doing but eventually I will get it done here we can see one of those branches that just broke off in a harsh windstorm and I just haven't been able to get up there yet and deal with it toyed with the idea of putting up the extending ladder onto the side of the tree there but frankly I'm worried that that tree is gonna bounce when I cut that weight off of it and I don't want the ladder going anywhere and or I don't want me flinging anywhere so I haven't done that yet getting into even longer term plans it's my understanding there used to be a, a fish hatchery about a mile mile and a half outside of town I'd really like to find that and if possible maybe take it over uh, it's, it didn't do well there were some really basic things that were apparently forgotten like uh, wintertime heat to keep those fish alive so I'm thinking with my aquaponics experience I might have a better chance at, uh, at pulling that off. I've been looking into getting a commercial fisheries type license here in Manitoba. It's not terribly expensive, but that would allow me to, you know, do things like raise tilapia, sell tilapia. Uh, I could be a broker bringing fish in from the states. Uh, a lot of people know that I'm really kind of fixated on koi. They're just so beautiful. Uh, so if I was able to do that with the commercial fisheries license, then... I don't even know if I'm saying that right but anyway if I get that license then I should be able to be a broker and get the koi that I want raise the koi up maybe even someday start breeding them because I have yet to find an active fully functioning koi farm in Canada so if anybody does know of one could you please drop their info into the comments below so I can get a hold of them find out what they had to do and or whether or not they ship through uh, post or UPS or anything because I would like to get koi. Uh, I will be working on goldfish when I finally get something going with the aquaponics because they're cheap and they're expendable. But long term I would really really like to get some koi. So yeah this is uh, probably kind of a quicker video. I don't know my rambling sometimes it feels like it's five minutes and it was 20 yesterday so who knows. But anyway yeah, this is just kind of a quick look around the yard at some of my dreams and long-term plans. Uh, it's about all there is. So, thank you all for joining me in number seven. And I have no idea what number eight's going to be, but it will probably be here on the JT Bear channel because of stupid YouTube changes they're making. So, maybe I'll make a rant video. It's a possibility. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have yourselves a wonderful day.